just a sad day. He's 64 year old. You know, Norman's gone, a legend. And I hope the old Bill's watching this, by the way, too. You know, because they don't like this. If I were to introduce Norman George, I'd say he was one of the best blokes I ever knew. Seriously. And if you want to mark out a 10, he gets 11 from me. Because he was such a genuine bloke. Where the beautiful and damn run walk across this land with their hearts set on infamy. Led by stories of the men who were great back when, being great was something you could be. And all that rock and roll with all the words you know breeds the wildest fantasy. Well, Norman were a character more to them life, were not it? You know, don't you? Dreaming someone else's dream. And where young boys stand, lives already planned by the great That is, uh... The day of Norman's funeral, good turnout for him. Lots of good lads here, obviously all his family and friends. The guy, pff, can't say enough good things about him. He's an absolute legend. First time I met Norman, well, he was a good mate of my, my dad's, and um, he took a trip. All lads were asking him to come and take us at football training. He turned up with some tracksuit on, white socks pulled up to his knees, uh, with his American accent, uh, getting us run around Queen's Park like lunatics, shouting, jump, in the American accent, and uh, we just looked like clowns. <laughs> All parents were laughing at us, and that's uh, my first memory of Norman. And there's a bench in place that marks another chase for destiny, but ended in exile. I met Norman when I was 16 and uh, I stayed I stayed over at his, his house when I was 16 and uh, I've got a good story about his children coming downstairs and they came down, I think there was a boy and girl them days and they came down, they got a stool out to the kitchen, brought it up to the bottom of the stairs and there was a picture of early football and they all climbed up and um, they kissed the photographs and I looked at Norman and said Norman said, my kids will always be brought up early. And it, it stuck with me all my life because, you know, it, even my kids, I mean, I'm named after Burnley Football Club. It, it, you know, I don't do that with my kids, but, I, you know, Norman brought it up and I love it to bits. There were just that thing about Norman, it just, it just fetched that warmth. It, it, he always had a smile, we used to call him Bobby Ball. You know, he had his curly hair, he had his moustache. I've known him for years from watching Burnley, for 30 years maybe, something like that. Yeah. We come from Bacon, I always watch Burnley for years, you know, so... Being a, a nice guy, dead friendly like, you know what I mean? He's just a good man. Yeah. Always there, always there for any advance, any time. He was one on his own, absolutely one on his own. The best ever I've ever seen him was he marched with 400 guys from Burnley, 12 mile, 10 miles to Blackburn, and smashed all town up, and then he smashed all ground up and still come back, you know, like that. We're like, you never forget your friend who stood there with you. It was a joy to know Norman. And my first recollection with Norman aware was a Newport County. Burnley played Newport County in 1982. We both got arrested. England had qualified for Mexico. So obviously, me being the English guy, I got a little bit of rough treatment. Norman being the Welsh guy, I got looked after. But he kind of got out of his cell because he was a black belt. And then we got released and we each it back to Burnley. And then obviously I realised that, that Norman, you know, we're a true Burnley fan. We got back to Burnley. And then obviously 
is the, uh, the Suicide Squad, Norman, Mick Moore and Gaz Archer, so Phoebe, a few more. Uh, you needed to be in them kind of gangs in them days, you know, to survive. Yeah, they were tough days. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you needed to be around, you needed to have that kind of people, you know, and Norman was one of the best. Good to see everybody out, Norman deserved what he got today, he was a good guy. We went Birmingham and then we just like, uh, oh, all these big colour lads coming to it. I know it's a horrible thing to say these days, but in Birmingham at the time, we went back to the 70s, 80s, um, these colour lads coming around and they were fucking used, they were like fucking massive. And they were like, me and Arnold just stood there and we, we got beat, but we didn't get beat. You know, we kept getting up. <laughs>